views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of the station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's so great to be tuning into you and having all of you tune in to us. Today, I've got a fabulous, fabulous guest uh, joining me here today. Also the host of her own show, which you'll hear about, Christine Upchurch. But more importantly, somebody that has said yes to taking a powerful message out into the world. And when we think about that, we think about the messages we take out in the world, and we think about saying yes to the life that we want to live to create a better world, you think of Christine Upchurch, because everything I know about her has been about helping thousands and thousands of people rise up, you know, figuring out in her own life what that means. You know, somebody that has been the co-creator of many, many things, but most importantly, writer, teacher, inspirational speaker, energy healer, and host of the nationally syndicated The Christine Upchurch Show. But beyond all of that, there's something inside of each of us. There's that thing. It's a thing. Jessica calls it thing one. It's that thing that really doesn't allow us to live a life of silence, to live a life where we control how we show up in the world. It's that thing that calls us, and I know you all know what I'm talking about because you have it. If you're listening to this show, clearly you have it. Because here's what it does. It calls us to come forward in life in bigger ways than we could ever imagine. But the cool thing about Christine is when the opportunity, when the awareness happens, she steps fully into it. That's what she helps the people that she works with, talks with, helps people understand absolutely the vibration of change because you have to understand that in order to be open to what step you're going to take, sometimes in faith, knowing that this is where you're going to go. The part that I love, though, and you're going to hear it today, is you're going to hear someone kind of like me. We understand the science and the research of life, too. Both of us have been researchers in a form of life, so to speak, but you don't forget that. So you bring forward this empirical notion of how to look at life from an energy and a vibrational point of view so that you can capture the essence of how to change lives, not just for having the giant dream, But sometimes it's the practicality of day to day. Today, she's bringing the conversation of the power and pitfalls of labeling. Christine, great to have you. Nice to be here, especially in studio with you, Pat. It's kind of cool. And, you know, I turned the heat up a little bit, or Benny did. Had Benny turned the heat up in here. Thank you, you Benny. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Sticks together. I know. We have to stick together. It's good. It's really good. It's good. Um, and, you, you know, it is great to be in the studio because the studio has an energy. It does. You know, right? This yeah. studio has been part of my life for 14 years, right? Uh-huh. And yours as well. Right. Right. And, you know, I guess it's been almost five years for me. Shocking. Yeah. It's, you know, time flies. I know time, it time flies when you're having fun. Time flies when even when life is difficult. Time flies when you get older, you know? It's like it, it just it, – our, our lives – just go way too quickly, and um, I'm grateful to have been doing this for so long yeah. as well. Yeah, I don't know anything about the older thing, though. <laughs> I keep saying I'm 38, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, yeah. As the cameras glare at us <laughs> in the studio, it's like, oh, yeah, come on, Pat. Um, th- th- let's just talk about labeling because, you know, I was talking about this earlier today. Labeling. I Just saying the word gives uh-huh. me a little creepy thing. Right, right. And, you know, it's funny because um, labeling can mean all sorts of things. It can mean it 
the ingredient list on the side of your um, cornflakes box. It can be the the medication label with the directions as well as the side possible side effects. Um, but the labeling that I want to talk about today is the labeling where you're you're using a word to describe, but there's a certain connotation to it. There's a certain energy to it. Well, let's take a look at our current demographic, or better known as the environment, the uh-huh. social world we live in. Right. And, you know, let's just stay in the United States for a moment. Uh-huh. Um, we are embedded with our pop culture of labeling. Yes, we, we are. And it's... It's funny because I think what's happened over the last oh, two, three years from my perspective, people have gone from um, sort of using more words to describe things to really latching onto those labels. And I think it started with the millennials, but I think that our entire population is using labels more and more often, which, you know, it, it has its pluses and its minuses, but it's it's become an integral part of our culture. Yeah, you know, I want to ask you a question about your definition of a label, mm-hmm. because I think many people may be thinking, yeah, I don't really know what they mean. Not sure how it's used. And I think it's really important to have some examples because the one that you used is important. I want to know if I'm buying something, whether it's genetically modified. Right. I mean, I want to know. Oh, yeah. Me too. Right. Yes. And, um, I mean, that's a whole other show or series of shows. And I know you've done them, Pat, and I've done some of them as well. But the labels I'm talking about are labels to define people or things where it's not just a like a single word or a couple of words to mm-hmm. describe something, but there's a certain connotation with it that is integrated in the culture. There's a certain perception that comes from it. So it could be something as simple as um, mother, which has all sorts of connotation, to um, racist, to Democrat, Republican, um, fat, skinny. I mean, there, there, there are all these different labels we can use that define things in a certain way, but there's a certain kind of pigeonholing that, pigeonholing that happens because of the fact that we have a certain connotation, there's a certain energy to it, there's a certain perception that gets persisted within our culture. Not only that, we then create a story, don't we? Oh, absolutely. Around it. Yes. Right? And, and then what happens is we have all the story that gets created around it, and then what we do is we tend to drop the story. So it's kind of like it's just that word or those couple of words, and we all think we know what they mean, and yet... What's the story behind it? And what are the details? And what are the nuances? So it's really a matter of, I think we've gotten to be really flip with the use of labels. And sometimes labels can be empowering and sometimes they can be very chastising. They can unite and they can divide. And I think we have to create more care around our use of labels. You know, what's interesting is, and and you know this from, you, you know, there are kids, children, you got to love them. They are so plugged in. They go to school. Uh-huh. They got they got like the phone, the smartphone. Right. And they come home and they say, Mom, what is transgender? Uh-huh. Yeah. Or KKK. What? These are kids that are asking these questions. Sure. Now, I don't even want to get into what parents say, but the answer to some of these labels is in the key. That's the key, isn't it? It's it's that's that's one of the keys. I think that um, we need to start with not only our perception of mm-hmm. them and how we describe them yep. within our own lives to our children to our you know community, but also it's how we use it because there's a certain there's an aspect of um, why we've chosen a particular label, why we've chosen to pigeonhole in a particular way, and we need to be conscious about that. The effect of doing Mm. that. And how can they... So let's talk about labels and, you know, how can they be harmful? Okay. So let's see. In terms of labels, um, certainly a label such as racist, okay, there's there's something that's very meaningful in that, right? Labeling somebody a racist. But there's a spectrum of its meaning. For instance, it can mean somebody's a white supremacist, right, on the extreme end of things. And it can also mean that somebody is ignorant about aspects of certain struggles with those who have been, you know, oppressed based on race. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it could be somebody who is incredibly conscious, who have taken classes and um, read lots of books and have dialogued with people to see what their their issues are with you know their experience of oppression. But they're n- none of us, I think, are completely conscious. If we haven't lived it, I don't think we can totally know. So. You know, there, there's that wide spectrum of, OK, well, I've probably got more in me and I just mm. haven't uncovered it, unearthed it yet to white supremacist. So, it, you know, there's there's a varying degree. And I think that in some cases using that term is very appropriate. And that sting that comes with it is a good thing. Right. Mm-hmm. It's it's a type of boundary setting. And yet on the other end of things, it could be somebody who's just a little ignorant who needs to have something illuminated for them and so what happens is we you know we have this extreme word it's got that sting and it creates this separation right Mm -hmm. Um, and in some ways it's a very good thing however for those elsewhere on the spectrum that sting actually makes them want to um, either push back against it and not look at their own potential racism, Mm -hmm. um, or they want to sort of, you know, have different tribe because they're not being accepted for some of their ignorance. So it's just, it's one of these things where, you know, more words would be better. You know, it's interesting because um, before my uncle died, um, I said to my uncle, why do my, my, on my mother's side, why do these people have blue eyes? Why did Aunt May have this dark, dark hair and blue eyes? Why is my mom, why did my mom, why was she fair, Uh right? And his answer at the time was, I don't know, your grandfather, I think, was adopted. Okay, so I didn't know any of that. All of a sudden, we got internet. Uh We got the internet. And we get, looking at my name, we only thought we were in the United States. All of a sudden, there's bacillus all over South America, Everywhere, wow. everywhere in South America. So I said to my uncle, I said, what the heck? He says, oh, well, Grandpa had a brother, went to Brazil. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm now like doing the ancestry business sure. thing. What right. is that online? Yeah, I, I find it fascinating. I don't know if you've seen that video that's gone viral out there about people who um, have the prejudice. They They are, you know they actually think of themselves in one way and they're uncomfortable with other ethnicities, other cultures, and they get that the, their DNA tested and they find the thing that they've actually been pushing against or, or separating themselves from actually is a part of what they are and who they are. Interesting, right? It is. So I start to look up my grandfather. What do I find? First, I look up the grandfather. Talk about labels, right? Uh-huh. This is this is it. And we're going to take a break. All of a sudden, I find out grandfather went to Brazil. But why would he go to Brazil? That doesn't make sense. That's I mean, come on. Really? Why would you go to Brazil? But then I find out my my other grandfather, my mother's father. Now comes the story. Dude was born in Brazil. Hmm. Changes your whole ethnicity profile. Right. Wait a minute. What does that make me? Let's take a short break, everyone. We'll be right back. Can't wait to see what Christine gives me for a label for that. We'll be right back. Plus, live your purpose equals joy. That's the motto of Unstuck Joy with Vicki Todd. Vicki believes you were born with gifts that are meant to make the world brighter. Each show will feature an art visioning journal prompt to help you create your way to soul clarity. If you're ready to get unstuck and create more joy, this show is for you. Tune in every month on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit VickiWorldArt.com. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? 
visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. If you're one of the millions of Americans suffering from anxiety, you probably know how powerless and out of control this emotion can make you feel. This is why it is so important to remember that anxiety is created by your mind, which means that you can learn to use your mind to uncreate it. Hello, my name is Dr. Friedman Schaub. My award-winning book, The Fear and Anxiety Solution, provides you with a step-by-step -step breakthrough process to understand and resolve the root causes of your anxiety and build a solid foundation of confidence and inner peace. If you are ready to take your power back, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com. That's thefearandanxietysolution.com. Or call 866-903-6463. That's 866-903-MIND. Are you struggling in a relationship and deeply craving some tools and support to get things back on track? Do you crave having a loving, compassionate relationship with Mr. Right, but always seem to pick Mr. Wrong? Well, Sarah Luce can help. She's created a four-week online course starting September 28th that will teach you how to shift your energy and behavior to have new transformative outcomes. And you're going to get a personal one-on-one -on -one session with Sarah to ensure you get powerful, personal results. Sign up today at sarahluce.com. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Wow. Hey, everybody. I love today's show. Um, you know, this is something, first of all, of course, Christine Upchurch is joining the show and going to talk about this because that's what she does on her show. Um, before we talk about the psychology of labeling and what that really means, uh, first of all, tell folks how they can find out more about you, how they can find out about your show, how they can listen to past shows, all of the above. Okay, well, you can find me on, on christineupchurch.com. Uh, that's C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E-U-P-C-H-U-R-C-H.com. You can also find me on Facebook. And, in fact, I've started doing Facebook Live. I've had people nudging yeah. me and pushing me, me for too. months. And, you know, I love to teach. And I've, I've sort of, like, over the last year or so, I've sort of reduced that because I was going through a big life change. And uh, my divorce is complete, and I'm like, moving forward with a, you know, working on a book, and and so on and so forth. But anyway, it's like I want to continue to reach out, and so yes, I've on Facebook, Christine dot Upchurch dot one. For some reason, I was the first. I don't know. I guess must have gotten on Facebook early. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you're a visionary. Well, perhaps yes. Right. Yes. Right. We 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 step forward even if we don't know that there's a step below to. Hold us, you know. It's like, know. okay, we'll, we'll take the step. We trust. I know. I don't actually have to worry about anybody duplicating crust busting. I don't think anybody actually wanted to. Uh -huh. um, talk about labels. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. So when, when Jack Canfield walks up to you and says, you're the crust busting lady, and you're like, uh -huh. oh, okay, I am. Um, but there is a psychology to labeling. Is there it is. There? there is. And it's, it's interesting because we as humans, are tribal in nature, right? We need connection with other people. I know there are probably lots of you who are listening right now uh, who feel like you've been sort of dropped onto this planet and you're not so sure about most of the other humans. And, and, you know, like, what am I doing here? I know I've got a mission, but, you know, most of these people I really can't relate to. However, as humans... And those of us who are on our mission for the world in our own, you know, small ways or big ways, we have this basic need to be tribal. 
And so the tribe is defined in a particular way. Now, you were just talking about sort of your ancestral tribe. That I discovered. Yes, that you discovered. And, and yes, scientists will tell you that the, the struggles and aspects of, like, the trauma from your previous ancestors, I mean, from your ancestors, so the, 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 the previous culture that you knew, not, no, sorry, knew nothing about affects your DNA now. Mm. So it's... Probably relevant in the sense that you might want to explore a little bit about, you know, what that past might have looked like for your, you know, relatives that you didn't know about before. Um, however, that label is not something you particularly have been connecting with because that's not how you define yourself. You're more about crust busting. Right. You, you know, you're, you're, you're more about spreading the word. You're more about, you know, the, the transformation talk radio, like let's mm-hmm. move this mission forward. And you have connected with your tribe within that realm. So, you know, certain labels may relate to you, but if there's no, like, charge to it, if there's not that emotional connection to it, for you in particular, you know, it, it, it like, okay, so I've got some Brazilian, you know, Portuguese or whatever, um, it's, it's less important than the, the mission that you define now. But I love in. what you're saying because let's take this to, the, to that level of it. Now, in the in the like the few folks that I've shared it with, so here's the feedback you get. Well, now we know why you're so fiery. I'm thinking like, uh-huh. okay, wait a minute. I didn't even know I was fiery. Uh, yeah, I know. But now it's like <laughs> too much information. Right, right. I, it's funny. But I was it, getting a, a face reading from Jean Hayner. She's just like, oh, you've got a lot of fire in you. And it's uh, like, I, I think that I haven't really um, lived that fully until the last couple of years, but it's, I think fire is a very good thing, yes. And I, I don't know if it has to do with, you know, your, your ancestors or who you have shown up to be <laughs> at a soul level within this realm, you know, this year, this, this, this lifetime. But, you know, um, I love what you're saying because here's the next question for you. You know, I'm pretty comfortable in my skin uh-huh, these days. Right. So, I don't know. You could call me whatever you want pretty much. And, right. you know, there are some folks that have. So it doesn't, quote, harm me the way it could harm others because there is a harm right. that we generate and sometimes we don't even know it. And I think that's part of the psychology of this. Absolutely. Can labels harm us? Absolutely. They can harm us in a couple of different ways. Uh, one is when there is that negativity, that, that, you know, that energy of hatred or separation that is pushed in that direction with that label, you know, to the person that it reaches and then there, the other way it can harm us is we connect with the tribe, right? So think in terms of, okay, uh, let's see, the Republicans, right? Republicans versus Democrats. The people have defined themselves as being members of the Republican Party. In the Senate, you know, that, that distinction is very, very important. But there were three Republicans who would not vote for the Obamacare right. repeal, right? Right. And they had to think long and hard about separating from their tribe. That tribe can be a very positive thing, like, okay, let's work together in our group. We have similar philosophy. But when you go against the the tribal mentality, there can be, you know, what to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting that you're bringing this up. These are three people that I didn't really know before. Uh And we can make a lot about the fact that they separated from their tribe. They also had something else in common, didn't they? Tell me what. Women. Well, two of them were women. Two of them were women. And and one was a man going through a health crisis. That's right. Who um, had a a long-term history of being a bit of a maverick within his party. So what I love about this is the conversation of this and the psychology of labeling really calls us to study our own psychology of living. Absolutely. It? And I think it, it, it's inviting us to become aware of how we use labels, what they mean to us. Because, um, for instance, if a label can just be something that defines a person, right? Mm-hmm. If I'm in the grocery store trying to pick up something at the PCC deli mm-hmm. and the person who's there said, well, who, who, did, who took your order and said it was going to be set aside for you? I'm perfectly comfortable saying it's the tall black man because yeah. there are only two yeah. <laughs> black men there, right? So it's a descriptor, right? But if we are using, you know, black man in a different kind of framework, it's right. like we need to see if there's neutrality or not. 
Mm -hmm. And if there's not neutrality, and for for labels like white supremacist, you Mm -hmm. know, there's for me, there's not a lot of neutrality. It's it's like what what is it that's the energy behind that? What is the emotion behind that? Do I want to like burn them at the stake, or do I want to set boundaries and say, not in America, you cross the line here, um, you know, you're 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 not. You're not a part of the American tribe, mm-hmm. you know, and it's for some of you that means jail. So we have to think in terms of um, our emotional charge associated with the labels that we are spewing out. And we also have to think long and hard about what a label means to us when we're hearing the label. Mm-hmm. Because it can mean something different to everybody. And I think that's really at the core of it, too. Because, you know, right now we're being faced in, you know, with and our hearts go out to the folks in Texas. Oh, I mean, devastating. I'm from Texas originally. Right. I know you are. I've got That's family down there. It. Yeah. Um, and this would be a time where we would all come together. Yes. And yet I get a phone call from a friend of a friend who says, Pat, you got to help with this. And I'm thinking, OK, great. Donate money. Sure. No. She says, because of this newly discovered ancestry, by the way, uh-huh. um, says to me, oh, my God, they're rounding up the people from Mexico that are now obvious on the roofs and taking them to immigration. And I'm like, oh, that can't be happening. Yeah. I said, you can't be right. So I have a call into my immigrant. See, this is the harm of label. It is. Right. It is. Yes. And when the labels come first before the humanity. That's a problem. Therein lies a Huge problem. That's a problem. See, I think you nailed it. Let's take a short break. When we come back, I want to talk to you about that because we have to discover, you know, the pathway of humanity. But more importantly, there's an energy associated with humanity uh, and the label of humanity. And then there's an energy associated with the label of anything that is not in the spirit of is not in the dignity of the human spirit. When we come back, Christine Upchurch, we're going to be talking about the energetics of labeling. Got any questions? 1-800-930-2819. Give us a shout. We'll be right back. Hi there. My name is Audrey Michelle, host of Rewired Life Radio and a spiritual growth coach. I talk about this all the time on my show, listening to your body and acting on intuition. What do these things even mean? Here's the thing. About 10 years ago, I figured out I was doing it all wrong. I mean, I wasn't unhappy, but was I really happy? And then life sent me a spiritual smackdown like it does because I wasn't listening to my best resource, my body and my intuition. I was living from a place of fear. I was stressed and I was in pain and I seemed to be happily unhappy. Mostly I just didn't know what I didn't know. And what I didn't know was that my body and my intuition had all the tools I needed to live life as my best self. I'm sharing the tools I have learned over the last 10 years of my healing journey in my online class, Soul Awakening, beginning September 19th. Learn more. Go to AudreyMichelle.com slash awaken. That's Audrey Michelle spelled M-I-C-H-E-L dot com slash awaken. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. What is a brilliant culture? And how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you design a culture that is authentic, innovative, and successful. Learn how to create change with Cultural Brilliance Radio, the DNA of organizational excellence, and Claudette Rowley. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit ClaudetteRowley.com. Have you discovered the remarkable books at angelhealinghouse.com? Author Claire Candy Hoff has channeled rare books of inspiration and insight. Angels of Faith is an inspiring story of healing, comfort, and hope 
that reminds us that death is not to be feared, but embraced with joy. One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness takes readers on a roller coaster ride through Angel Ariel's five most important lives on Earth, as well as her experiences in the afterlife, and helps us remember our own journey across the veil. And Claire Candy's autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk In, which details the 2003 soul exchange that took place when Claire Candy walked out of her body and Angel Ariel walked in, creating heaven on earth for herself and others. To find out more about these wonderful books, visit angelhealinghouse.com today. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. For more information about me, I'm Dr. Pat. You can go to the drpatshow.com or you can go to transformationtalkradio.com and uh, you could just type in Dr. Pat if you want to do that, too. You know, today we're talking about the power and pitfalls of labeling with Christine Upchurch. Um, And before we get back into this uh, uh, next conversation, continuing this conversation on the energetics of, of labeling, Again, please let folks know how they can find about out more about you, what you're up to, all of the above. Uh, let's see. ChristineUpchurch.com, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, U-P-C-H-U-R-C-H.com, and on Facebook. And, of course, every Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific time, here on KKNW and Transformation Talk Radio. Yeah, that's what I love. Um. Let's talk about the energetics of labeling, because mm-hmm. you said yourself, you've been doing the show for five years. Yes. And you cannot change. I mean, you cannot help change. If you're doing a show like this and you've said yes to it. Oh, you're absolutely. You're interviewing a lot of oh, people. Yes. There's and, something that changes. So there's an energetic movement in you. Absolutely. And I labeling. think all, all, everyone who's listening has basically change underway, whether they like it or not. They may be resisting change, but change is occurring. We are, you know, we're humans. We're souls having human experience, and we are evolving one way or another. And so um, we can't help but change. And the more we listen, the more we talk, the more we read, the more we look within, the more we change. Mm -hmm. What is it about the... The work that you've done, even a healer, yes, right, yes. Um, but you've also been somebody that is blended and and moved together, science and spirituality, right. And so you come from a place where you look at how cause and effect affects the world. Yes. Where does labeling fit into the energetics of that? Mm-hmm. Yes, I I absolutely look at the world through ener- the eyes of of the sort of the energetic realm because you know I. I healed myself of cancer using what I believe the visualization, the surrender is all energetic. And the early stages of cancer left my body without any kind of medical treatment, mm. um, moved forward and, um, you know, became an energy healer, taught energy healing, um, you know, worked in the last decade and a half. So I view everything in terms of energetics. Now, in terms of labels, words themselves have an effect on the energetics of water. Your listeners may be familiar with uh, Masuro Emoto's work where you look at the the frozen water crystals. Mm -hmm. And uh, when there was a word such as love, there are these beautiful, beautiful crystals. Words such as hate, it would be this ugly, asymmetric, disturbing-looking crystal. So words have energy, but it goes beyond the word itself. Like I said before, like the, the phrase black man, you know, it, it's, it can be the, describing the, yeah. the person I want to talk to or it can be using it to separate, right, um, or to fear. So it's really a matter of what's the emotion behind it? Because I swear, I think that if we were looking at the jar of water and viewing the word hate, if we saw hate as somebody who is afraid, somebody who had woundedness that needed to be loved, the, the energetics of the water would probably be different. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Omoto has passed, loved that man, great sense of humor, interesting work. Um, but it's, 
it's it's like what's the emotion behind it? Because emotion has energy. And our attachment, which is typically fear based, mm-hmm. has energy to it. So there's like this energetic imprint as we think and feel and believe and project that label outward. It's got an energetic signature. And so it affects people. It affects yeah. our world. And so if it's, um, it, it's kind of like, uh, it just depends on what our intention is. Mm-hmm. But it's also, it also relates to the collective belief because you're actually putting it into this, this quantum soup out there yeah. of, of our consciousness. So something like the, um, the swastika, you know, mm. the swastika, the, the origination of the swastika, it actually meant something very different than what it got turned into, exactly. uh, you know, with Hitler. So it can be something that is, you know, means something very different and, and is very, you know, really healing versus it relates to hatred. Well, you know, I, I saw somebody who had created earrings out of swastikas and they were like healers. And, and I'm thinking that has the collective energy of hatred and murder and tragedy. And so you, you can't undo the collective energy. You mm-hmm. can have a totally different intention but you can't undo the collective energy. So that kind of trumps what the individual intention is. Yeah, and part of what you're saying, too, is, and which is super important, is those energies and the actions that constituted those energies and the reactions to those energies formed emotions. Yes. There was emotion behind the meaning of that right. under Hitler, and there are emotions behind the result of behavior. Yes. And so those emotions carry exactly what you're talking about. Labels carry emotions. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, those emotions are our guidance. um, But we need to be very aware of what emotional charge is attached to the particular label we're using. Um, And I know that sometimes, you know, we are on the receiving end of things. Uh, I certainly have been over the years, particularly when I was working as a statistician Mm -hmm. in the corporate world, you know, being called a woman, you know, yes, I'm a woman. I, and and I don't worry about the the 16 or 17 different types of gender labeling. I'm I'm happy to call myself a woman. Yeah. And, and yet that within the context of engineers in in a, you know, sexist organization that had a totally different connotation and I could feel it being called a woman, you know, in, in a technical field. I think things have changed over the years, but there's still aspects of that. So the word itself may be meaningful. It's a descriptor, right? But we can sense what the collective mm-hmm. perspective is on it, and we can feel it when we're the recipient of that label. Yeah. You know, I want to ask you this question about um, judgments, because we say label, it, it means one thing. Yeah. But there is a judgment that is associated with it. Now, We're not going to have all the same judgment. You and I maybe could pick a word and say something. It's going to have a reference for you that may be different than a reference for me. Right. Um, But those judgments, they are cellular magnets. Mm -hmm. They will grab on to our cellular energy, right? Right. Right. Absolutely. Talk about that a little bit because you did heal yourself. Right. Right. And there had to be sort of a way for you to do that emotionally, but also belief wise. And, you know, beliefs are the things that judgments are made of. Absolutely. Absolutely. And in fact, there have been people who have um, died in hospitals when they misinterpreted the diagnosis, when they had something mild wrong with them, they thought they were, you know, got a diagnosis that was going to kill them and they died within 24 hours. It's like, yes, the words and, and their interpret the interpretation um, can definitely affect us. Um, but in terms of the, the judgment, there's there's a difference between discernment and being judgmental, right? Yep. And we can usually feel the difference if we are being conscious. For instance, okay, let's let's take the the word animal. Okay, we humans are animals, but we use the word animal to distinguish ourselves from yeah. them. So if somebody is saying... You know, when I took that hike through the woods, I saw lots of animals, right? We know what they meant, right? You know, it's birds up in the trees, you know, maybe maybe a coyote, who knows what it was. Um, but 
if we have this perspective like, okay, you know, the the dogs aren't allowed into the shelters down in the Houston area because they're animals, right? Yeah. There's there's a difference in the energy of that word. It's kind of a, it's created this separation. So the judgment, what it does, it can actually create a, a separation that's healthy sometimes. Like, okay, well, you know, you know, white supremacist, you know, um, humanitarian. There's like this this huge differential in terms of the energy, and we may want separation from one and not separation from the other. Uh, but there, we need to be aware of of what the judgment is and 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 can we just discern can we detach right. and discern what the underlining meaning is mm-hmm. well you know look there are stories about this you know there are a couple that come to mind one is a real quick story about a man who locks himself in um a walk-in freezer and he he was convinced he was going to die mm-hmm. and he starts to write letters and he's writing these letters about i'm dying i'm in the freezer i'm dying and then he has a final passage where he says i cannot write anymore because my fingers are frozen. When they find him dead, not only do they find the letters, but they discover that the freezer's temperature never dropped below 50. And pretty much wow. he died. Yeah. It didn't drop below 50. Because we know that we can live in that environment, sure, right? Sure, right. You know, uh, the freezer was unplugged. Oh, my goodness. But that is an example. And we have many more. Then why is it that we maybe know this, but yet choose anyway? I think that um, part of it is just habit, Mm -hmm. right? You know, Dr. Joe Dispenza wrote the wonderful book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself or something Uh. along those lines, right? It's habit. Um, And part of it is that we want to fit into the tribe, right? We do. And so if our tribe is using the particular labels, then, you know, we want to use them too. If if we have been raised within the, the tribe of our family and... You know, they use the labels towards us. We're going to use those labels towards ourselves. It's 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 really a matter of, um, you know, our, our tribal belief. I know. A month ago, I was Italian. Now I got a new label yeah. from, a, from a friend of mine. I, I'm not Italian anymore. I, I'm now L'Italian. Uh-huh. It, to me, it doesn't mean anything. But to somebody else, it would. I mean, that may seem like a benign example. Mm-hmm. But we live this 24-7 we are hearing labels everywhere. Right. And if you used more words to describe that situation with you, mm-hmm. then people would know that you weren't raised in sort of a, a Latin kind of culture. But if you say um, whatever that term was, the Latin combined with Italian, 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 I had never heard that one before. I had never heard it either. Then people, people might not be able to discern. So more words to describe something gives people more information as opposed to label, which they're going to jump to certain conclusions. Well, you know, this is part of, look at, how do we use labels constructively? Because there's, I always believe in, I'm kind of like the Martini. there's this and then there's that. There's black, then there's white. Uh-huh. So if there's a downside, is there an upside? Absolutely. It connects us with certain tribes. And that can be very beneficial. Think of, think of the term mother. Right. That that is a label. And once you become a mother, you're a member of the tribe of motherhood. Right. You're you're part of the mothers. And it changes you for most of us who are carrying mothers. As I say, the majority of people, despite their woundedness, despite their imperfections, um, really have this kind of love towards their children. It's the closest we can get to often in terms of unconditional love. I think we can do the same thing with our pets, but that's Mm -hmm. a whole other story. And so there's an aspect of, of being a member of that tribe that can be very wonderful because we, we know that other mothers get that. They, they get us on a level that other people might not get us. Mm-hmm. And so there's something very beneficial about being a part of that tribe. Um, also, when we use certain labels to define ourselves, if we, if we use the term um, strong, you know, certain descriptors, um, healer, then it's... And we're not really doing it in terms of the ego, like I'm a healer and therefore I'm powerful. But, be, but it's like, wow, I've learned to tap in to the quantum field and facilitate healing and facilitate healing for others and myself. Whoa, this is really cool. That kind of sort of reinforces that the power of that label. It's so funny we're talking about this. Um, I heard uh, somebody make a statement the other day about uh, Gal Gadot. And she's Wonder Woman. Uh-huh. And their statement was, she, you know what? Her career is over. 
And I'm thinking, what? Uh, and, and what they were saying is she will never be anything but Wonder Woman. And, uh, I, and I had a moment where my brain wanted to buy into that as a negative thing. Right. And I stepped back and I said, oh, wait, let me think. Sigourney Weaver. She'll never be anything but, yeah, Ridley. Uh-huh. Right. Um, but it's interesting, right? Yes. This is a label. They're already sold out for Halloween mm-hmm. with the outfit. Right. It, 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 All little girls want to be one. No, woman, not yes. just little girls. <laughs> little, little boys want to dress up, and I the moms are like, uh, "Okay, my sister's Wonder Woman." They don't really know the difference, right? What is it that we can do to use some labels, use the labels we have in this world to maybe describe outside things in a positive way, or not use the labels and describe things in a positive way? Well, I think that we need to be very clear on our on our own intention. Right. And our own emotional charge associated with it. Mm. I think we also need to be somewhat aware of the perception that exists in our culture over a particular label, about a particular label. So um, we just need to be more aware of using that label. If you call someone Wonder Woman in this day and age, right, that's a big compliment. Pat, you're Wonder Woman. Look at all that you do. Look, look at the power that you have. That's a compliment. Um, you know, 20 years ago, it might have been, it might have been a compliment or it might have been kind of like a rolling the eyes like you think you're so powerful. Oh, you're Wonder Woman, right? You no, know, like, Zena. 20 years ago, I was Zena. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so um, the, the, the labels, we need to be aware of the cultural connotations. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think that we need to be very willing to ask more questions. Questions. When we hear about a label, it's like, okay, let's hear more details about this situation right. here. Like, what do you mean by that label? Because they're somebody else's perception and my perception may be two very different things. Mm-hmm. So we need to kind of like unravel yeah. the meaning behind the word or the, the you know, the, the, the phrase. I love this. And I love the whole thing about finding out your heritage. Because for me, now I'm, I've decided I need to find out more about that. Right. I need to find out more about the city. My, my grandfather and apparently his parents all of them born down there and I I need to find out more but find out more in a curious way Uh of learning right so here's my question can labels help us learn interesting I I know isn't that that, I was thinking about that I think that when we have that curious neutrality about something as opposed to like I've just heard that label, it doesn't fit me, or I've just used that label, and, um, you know, and I'm sure it's right. If we have this, this neutral curiosity and say, huh, what do they mean by that? And, and, and what are the possibilities of this label, mm-hmm. and how might it be right, and how might it be wrong, and what's my perception, and, 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 and what's my truth associated with it? Mm-hmm. Not the, the pushback, you know, that's wrong or, oh, that's right because it makes me yeah. feel good. But, huh, you know, am I really Wonder Woman? Okay, well, oh, my goodness, I've shown up from my mission in so many ways. <laughs> and I feel really vulnerable in these ways. And it's, you know, calling somebody Wonder Woman is, is calling them bigger than life. And life can be difficult sometimes. So really sort of a, assessing the whole picture and being willing to have that neutral curiosity, the curiosity that you're talking about. Um, can help us to grow and, and to really to sort of open up our consciousness to not only our own perception of self, but our perception of the world and how we interact with it. I think one of the more common labels that we have as women that has more jokes about it than any other area that I could think of. Um, and it doesn't matter what race you are. doesn't matter. It transcends race, religion, heritage, and any of that. There's one label that has emerged as the number one label that has taken on so much meaning for women. I experienced it myself. What what, what is that label? When I went blonde. Oh, yes. When I went blonde. And I didn't know this until I just did my hair, my natural color, or close to it. They Uh said, yeah, you weren't really a blonde. And I'm like, what does that mean? Right. I know. Isn't that interesting? And it's funny because um, I am blonde now. I know you are. That's and, why I mentioned and it. And so, um, but I tell you that I don't think anybody, because of, of my energy of what it means to be blonde, I think that that trumps that kind of 
cutting remark because I don't think anybody would make that comment about me. And part of that has to do with the energy I have associated with being a blonde. They used to say it to my mom, my stepmom. Uh-huh. My stepmom was from the South, and she was gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, right? And um, nails always done, red uh-huh. lipstick, right. red nails, always just beautiful. And I remember this with her about the blonde jokes. My dad would do that. Oh. And she used to say with the Southern drawl, something like, oh, honey, you had not seen nothing yet but the wrath of a blonde that is pissed off. <laughs> and I, I like, oh. Good for her, yeah. But... See, this is a label. Yes, and it we don't use the same label with blonde men, do we? Benny, do we? No. Blonde men? No. Uh, Not so much. I don't think so, but I mean, I think of Ken, you know, from Ken and Barbie a little bit. Oh. oh. Little. Wasn't he kind <laughs> of portrayed God, as a little bit? Uh, Barbie is a label. Yeah. But that's what oh, I'm it saying. Is. That's the only thing I could come up with. I know. I, other than that, I don't believe so. And, and Barbie could mean different things. Barbie there could you mean, you know, just like... Made up too much. It could mean perfect figure. It could mean really tall. It could mean there's nothing behind those eyes. <laughs> it, it, you know, so Headlights how do you interpret off. that label? Headlights are off a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's what they were saying to me when I did my hair blonde and uh, I just did it back. And I thought, wow, you know, like, oh, my God, thank goodness you didn't say that to my face. Uh-huh. Um I want to thank you for today. What a great show. And there is a final message in this. And again, please tell people how they can find out more about you. And thank you for this conversation. We could have gone on for another two hours. Yeah. Well, thank you, Pat. And you know, it's um, if you want to reach me, christineuptrich.com. Also, you can find me on Facebook. I'm doing a, a Facebook Live series. And um, I'm looking at some interesting things. And, and I'll be talking about um, the phrase, seeking ye shall find, and it's the, and the interpretation of that, and, and it's, it's kind of interesting because I think it's going to open your eyes in a new way about the direction of our spirituality. Um, I love that. In terms of the final message, oh, I just encourage people to be conscious of the labels that you use, not only towards others, but towards yourself, right? Uh, and think in terms of potentially using more words if you think there might be any kind of ambiguity Think about what kind of emotional charge you have behind things. Is it the hatred that you're pushing against? If you're pushing against hatred with hatred by the labeling, then, you know, you you need to be aware of that. If you are sort of setting boundaries based on that hatred, that's a whole other thing. We just need to be very conscious about the labels and not get too complacent about um, what those labels, how they can affect others and how they can affect the separation in our world. And, mm. and can we redefine labels? Can we use more words to create more unity? That's a cliffhanger that they'll have to find out on your show. Okay. <laughs> Friday. 11 o'clock, yes. KKNW, Transformation Talk Radio. Christine, thank you so much. Thank you. I want to thank all of you for tuning us in and turning us on. You've heard a lot today. And so I really hope that you're thinking some things through. The next time that you make a reference to something, think about it. Is it going to rise you up or is it going to bring you down? See you next time. Try to swim around.